Hello everyone. Today we will talk about a new feature released by Test Trigger to help to auto heal your Selenium tests automatically. How does it work? Well, as you know, Test Trigger is a way to express steps purely from end user's perspective in English. Uh, like the example you see here on the screen where it cl says click add to cart uh, and so on and the trigger would execute it the same way as a human would execute uh, that steps using uh, the same instructions uh, as, as provided you can think of the trigger as a human emulator and I would basically will refer to test trigger as human emulator going forward. Now, how exactly uh, test trigger works and how exactly it will auto heal uh, stuff. And we will be working with this uh, very simplistic application as an example. Uh, test trigger works by, uh, first of all, using human emulator in reverse and trying to express from end user's perspective what uh, did you try to do when you were trying to click on certain element, uh, enter some data in certain element, or then you were validating certain element. And uh, then if your test is failing, like in the second version uh, of application uh, here, you it will uh, catch the fact that uh, you can't find the right element and it will try to uh, again get visible elements from the screen apply a stored human level description of how to find the elements and if it finds the element it will update the locator for you and log it out uh, if it does not find an element, it will say, hey, you should probably fail, and it will fail. All right, so uh, let me first walk you through these uh, two versions of the application, which we will be testing, and I will illustrate uh, the differences and show how it works without test trigger and with test trigger. For example, we are working with this simplistic application all it does is it updates this message again it works exactly the same way in version one and version two uh, and we are clicking in particular in uh, on this button and it has uh, conveniently it has id changer uh, type button <laughs> and <coughs> uh, to update the message however in the second version of the application uh, if you look into that there is no button with that id there is no element with that id in the first place it's a tag and a span and the id is different as well uh, it says pusher in there now clearly uh, if we uh, uh, try to write uh, the selenium tests absolutely directly as we would usually write uh, in straightforward way where we find elements by id and we're trying to find button by the changer uh, then it will fail uh, to find this element uh, when you run it second time because second time this element has a different id however from end user's perspective, it's absolutely identical, as you can see, and the message is identical there as well, and this is what test trigger would rely on. So let me show you how does it work. First, uh, let's do it without test trigger. Uh, so what we are doing here is we're opening the first version, um, like finding the input and the button, anything added, adding the data, clicking, and then validating when text had been updated. Uh, then, then we change the URL to second version of application and do exactly the same thing again. 
and let's try to run it without test trigger see what's going to happen so the first version it succeeded pretty quickly and the second version is trying to find the uh, uh, element by id changer and it cannot find it and it therefore fails now uh, let's see what happened what happens if we update the, how we get the driver and now we use the trigger wrapper to automatically heal our driver all right so then we let's close this and exit then we run the application okay it opens it up uh, first quick click succeeded and second will first fail uh, which will trigger uh, attempt by test trigger to uh, re-execute it from a user's perspective it will do that and it will succeed and let's look into logs uh, in here so as you can see here it was uh, identifying uh, test trigger locator for um, the selenium locator for id message it's a message for chain changer it's update message and for xpath is text below label updater uh, and then it runs second time again it finds message no problem however it couldn't find here you can see this four seconds uh, where it basically time uh, times out trying to find a changer element it couldn't find it so uh, it pushes data to test trigger this trigger says, uh, prints out on severe level of logging as old ID is changer and new ID is pusher, helping you to uh, quickly and easily update your tests uh, once the change had been identified. Uh, and then uh, the text is in error and that allows your test to succeed. So once again, what did test trigger do here? Uh, when it runs the first time, it identified uh, basically what, what message, by the way, what does it mean message? Message is a placeholder in here. Uh, it identified uh, the how a human sees the element on the screen and stored it on the trigger side for the input it stored message as a human level way of identifying that element for changer it is uh, update message as a human way to identify it uh, and uh, for the text it's text below label updater now when it executed second time it, it does the same thing for uh, uh, input again however it can't find the uh, element by id changer so it switches to the mode where it tries to find the element by the human level identifier which had been stored before which is update message it can find uh, it this update message in here and this update message has uh, an id so it identified it still have an id element which is not empty as the new id uh, id element is this so it suggests to update uh, the locator from changer to pusher and then uh, next thing uh, executes successfully so this is how a uh, test trigger uh, helps uh, your test to uh, automatically heal by uh, basically stepping back and executing this step from end user's perspective the same way as it was successfully executed before 
uh, and if element still exists it will find it if it couldn't find element uh, from end user's perspective it will fail as it should for example uh, if this uh, page no longer contains uh, update message button uh, or the button has been renamed to say change message it will fail because from a user's perspective it's a different button uh, especially if id also changed in there uh, uh, this is one and second test trigger will help you to save gigantic amount of time updating your own tests because it will show you how your uh, uh, element locator changed be it id or xpath or some some other attribute that you are using for for your testing uh, saving you a lot of time by going through those steps and identifying what's a new um, identifier uh, or locator for the same element so basically it's also a way to save time anyway thank you very much uh, for uh, for viewing and have a great testing